All right, so here's some basic lambda calculus for semantics in linguistics. And we're going to take a look at the three guiding principles that we'll start with. We'll explain each one in detail so we can do some basic sentences. And then as the course continues, we're going to find that these rules need to be improved. So the first rule says that if alpha is a terminal node, then the meaning of alpha is specified in the lexicon. So what we mean for terminal nodes are things at the very bottom of the trees. This means that the meanings of words like John and Eats are going to be specified in the lexicon. In other words, we're going to be able to figure out what those are. But everything else in the tree is going to have a different set of rules, like the noun phrase, the verb phrase, the verb in the sentence. We'll need something else to deal with those. So here's what our lexical entries are going to look like. When it comes to proper names, we're just going to use the actual name of the person. And this is not quote unquote a word. What this is, is this is a representation of the person. So when we write Jim here, we're really trying to specify the object in the real world with some sort of label. With transitive verbs, we know that these take the form like X dies or X sleeps. So we just need a subject. So this is going to be lambda X dot X dies. So this will be true if we find a subject that dies. In the terms of love, we would have a frame like X loves Y in this case. So we're going to be searching for two things, but it's important to remember which we're getting first. We're going to pick up the object first and then the subject with the way that the tree structures work because they look like this direct object and subject SVDO. So in terms of our Lambda order, uh, we're going to want Lambda something, Lambda something, and it's going to be X loves Y. So which are we picking up first? We're picking up the direct object. So we're going to put lambda y out first and then lambda x inside because the order of resolution is from left to right when you start inserting things from lambdas. So y will be replaced before x. That's definitely not what I wanted to do there. And for conjunctions, so uh, this will take two things. So it will take lambda p, it will take lambda q, and it will be true if both of the things are true. So if p equals q, if that equals to one. So this is like a truth condition in this case. We have two propositions, p and q, and and is gonna be true if both of those conjuncts are also true. So if p is equal to q is equal to one, that basically says they're both true. So this is like the sentence s and s. So, now we're going to be able to put our lexical entries into our trees. So um, if we go back to our first slide for John, we would be giving it a name just like John, because that is what the meaning would be. And for eats, this is an intransitive verb. It'd be lambda x dot x eats. So what happens now for our higher nodes? Well, if we have alpha as a non-branching node, so this means that alpha goes to one thing, beta, then what we say is that the meaning of alpha is the same as the meaning of beta. Basically, the meaning passes up. So what this means is that the meaning of the verb phrase is going to be dependent on the meaning of the verb, because the verb phrase only has one daughter. And the meaning of the verb is going to be dependent on the meaning of eats, because the verb only has one daughter. So therefore, if we know that the meaning of eats is lambda x dot x eats, then we know that the meaning of the verb is going to be lambda x dot x eats, and the meaning of the verb phrase in this case is going to be lambda x dot x eats. So this will be how any non-branching node will work, so just a straight line down. But what is going to happen if we have a node that branches out into two other nodes? So basically what we're saying here is that if alpha is a branching node and we have beta and gamma as daughters, so this can look uh, two different ways. It doesn't need to be beta than gamma. It could be gamma than beta. So, and then we have beta is a function whose domain contains gamma. So basically you can think about this as a verb phrase is the type ET. It's lambda X, it's searching for something that's verbing. A noun phrase is a type E. It is being put in to the verb phrase. So uh, in terms of the function here from entities to truth value, this noun phrase is in the domain of the verb phrase. So what we can say in this case is that the verb phrase is a function acting on the noun phrase. So alpha is the function beta applied to gamma. 
So if we want to know what the meaning of the sentence is in this case, this means one of its daughters is a function acting on the thing that, that's in its domain. In this case, we have an ET a function taking on an E, an entity. So uh, in the case of the sentence, the sentence is going to be true if uh, the NP verbs, so whatever the, the VP is, so if the NP VPs. So we're going to see how this looks. All right, so here's Richard met Megan. Let's use all of our rules to come up with a semantic structure for this. So the meaning of Richard, we're just going to give it a name. Uh, I could write Richard, but for the sake of space, I'm just going to write R. Now, the meaning of the noun is going to be the same thing as the meaning of the daughter because it's just one branch. So that's also going to be R, and that's going to pass up on the noun phrase as well. In fact, I'm going to label types here as well as we go through. Uh, so E is Richard. Now, Richard met Megan. So Megan is going to be another entity. That's going to be another E. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to call Megan M. And we're going to do the same thing because these are non-branching nodes. We can just pass the meanings up here. Okay. Now, in terms of met, what is met? Well, met is a transitive verb. So it's an E-E-T. It's taking an entity, it's taking another entity, and then it's giving us a truth value. So this is gonna pass up as we go through our tree, but when we get to the verb phrase, we're gonna take in an entity. So now we're no longer searching for two entities, just one, and then at the sentence level, we're gonna pick up another entity. So in terms of met, uh, we saw how to do this. I'm gonna put this right here. This will be lambda y dot lambda x dot x met y. So again, we're doing lambda y first because we're picking up the direct object first. Now, this meaning is going to be the same for the verb above it because we have that pass up rule. It's just a non-branching node. So now for the VP, this is where we're going to do our function application. So the verb phrase is going to consist of the verb, the function, acting on the noun phrase. So this is going to be lambda y dot lambda x dot x met y, and then we're going to apply the function m to it. So what's going to happen is that m is going to replace every single position that y is in. So our final result for this is going to be lambda x dot x met m. So that's the meaning of the verb phrase. When we're at the sentence, or when we're at the phrase met Megan, it's lambda x dot x met Megan. It's what we would expect. Okay, and now for the final node up top, the sentence node. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply uh, lambda x dot x met m, uh, and we're going to put Richard in that, and the condition it's going to be true if that thing is true. So what we can write for the sentence is we can write this more so in plain English. It is going to be true, which is one, if and only if R met M. So that's how we can put all of our rules together. If you want to do any tree structures, this is what we're dealing with right now. And we're going to expand these rules to account for more categories, because right now we can't really do too many interesting things. This is about the most interesting sentence we can get at this point.